everyone welcome back to my channel today I've got some fragrances that are in my humble opinion classy sophisticated and elegant I've got a few here more than five less than ten I think so we'll just get into it I'm starting off with a sample that I've emptied I've actually just emptied it and where is where did I put it here it is, here it is. So this one is Bella Am. You can't really see it. It's a completely empty sample because I love it so much I've used it all up. It's Bella Am by Les Abstray, which of course is the brand that Eugene from You Smells Good created. I am buying this next month. I'm buying a full bottle and I'm so excited to have it. So why is it sophisticated, elegant, all of that stuff? Because it's got the most beautiful iris, because it doesn't shout, it doesn't scream. I think when it comes to being classy, sophisticated, elegant, one really important factor is not to shout not to be obnoxious if you think in terms of people if you look at the way people behave the person that behaves classy is not the person that is impolite that shoves their way to the front of the queue they don't shout they don't smell bad they have good manners they are gentle they are calm they are polite and I apply the same Thing to fragrances and for me Balam is beautiful very sophisticated lots of facets very interesting but it does not shout that's not to say it doesn't have a great projection and sillage but everything blends so beautifully together so you have this amazing iris accord which is somehow suede like yeah somehow makeup y somehow sweet now there are some sweet notes you've got this tonka resin and you've got some spices which kind of give it a little zing lift it up a little bit but it is not a big spicy fragrance it's like a cozy comforting blanket but this blanket is of all these beautiful beautifully blended shades of different colors and it's just absolutely lovely I really love it and I think it's a very very sophisticated very very elegant so Belle Arm is my first fragrance on the list so another way to be understated and therefore classy elegant is to wear just a fairly simplistic cologne now you could choose any cologne uh, that that is sort of gentle and not too shouty the one that I've chosen, I don't know if you'd really call it a cologne, but I've gone for Neroli Portofino from Tom Ford. I actually prefer the aqua version of this, but this is the one that I've got. When it's gone, I will replace it with the aqua. The aqua is slightly sweeter, slightly more floral and more powdery. There is actually quite a difference. They're not, they're not the same for sure. And, um, but Neroli Portofino is ultimately, it's a, a fresh citrus Neroli, but it has the most beautiful, powdery, musky, clean dry down. So it's not all sharp and bitter. It starts off a little fresh with a little bitterness that you would expect with Neroli. And then you get this beautiful powdery, slightly sweet, musky dry down. According to the notes, there's an amber note I don't get any amber from this. I don't get resins. I do get a little sweetness. Maybe there is some amber notes in there, but I would say do not expect an amber with this fragrance. It's much more of a clean, uh, fluffy, musky, soapy-ish uh, fragrance. And you can't go wrong with it. You cannot offend. You cannot overspray. It's understated, classy, sophisticated. But as I say, you don't need to get Tom Ford. It's very expensive. There are lots and lots of great colognes out there. Or well, you could go for uh, the Ferrari one, Bright Neroli, but you don't get that fluffy, musky dry down. You get a lot more of the citruses and they do last really well, but you don't get the fluff. If you love, love, love Tom Ford, if you love the dry down of, of Neroli Portofino, 
then you need Neroli Portofino. But if you're after something just really, really fresh and clean, a Ferrari Bright Neroli or any other cologne out there. And when I say cologne, I'm talking about a classic citrus cologne. But some of them don't have great longevity. So you may need to refresh. But my choice is Tom Ford Neroli Portofino. And even better is, in my opinion, the Aqua. Now saying sort of fresh, but not quite, with a little bit more uh, uniqueness, is this one from 4,000, one nearly dropped it, 4,160 Tuesdays. This one I've got is Clouds Illusion, but you could go for anything in the Clouds series. There's Thunderstorm, there's a fluffy lemon top, and there's all the different variations of clouds. You've got both sides of cloud. I smell almost all of them, I would say, the Parfums, the EDPs, and they all would work perfectly they all have a similar kind of thing and they are i'd say the uh, citruses here are more lemony kind of lemony orangey but i'd say they're more lemony lemony so a little sharper than the Neroli portofino but then you have a really beautiful and interesting dry down with some iris some sweet notes and some narcissus and uh, I can't remember what else, maybe sandalwood, I'm not sure, but some beautiful notes in here. It's really interesting. And as I say, the whole series is lovely and they're not beast mode. They last well, they give you a gorgeous cloud and very much sophisticated, slightly unique and understated. So perfect if you want to be elegant. So the next one we have is Killian's Woman in Gold. This one is a fairly simple fragrance to me. It's a, it's like a rose geranium. So it's a kind of a sharp and fresh rosy scent that is mixed with a marshmallow. And I want you to not just think of the smell and taste of marshmallow. I want you to think of the texture of marshmallow but then reduce the sweetness down by about half-ish and then mix it all together. And think of the texture in particular. Whenever I think and whenever I smell Woman in Gold, I kind of want to bite. I want to chew on it. It's, it's got this chewy texture. It's quite strong. So if you overspray, you're going to lose the elegance. So you want to keep the sprays reasonably light. Uh, depends on the situation of course but for me four sprays is absolutely fine and really really well lasting not the most interesting journey this fragrance doesn't really develop that much i'd say you do this the sharpness does calm down and mellow out so the fragrance mellows but overall it doesn't really change that much but it has the most beautiful fluffy sweet-ish but gently gently sweet-ish powdery-ish dry down that just makes me think of marshmallows and fluffy clouds and stuff like that but very much in a rosy hue and I just think it's really lovely and very very elegant it's called woman in gold which kind of invokes a an elegant picture it's inspired by a famous painting there's a big story behind it there's a film about it was stolen uh, during the Second World War from, I think it was a Jewish family. And there's quite the story in terms of uh, tracking it down and who owns it and who should have it and stuff. And I really want to watch this film. I actually ordered the DVD a couple of years ago um, off of eBay. When it arrived, it was not playable. It just wouldn't play, it was crap. So I really want to watch the film that, the film didn't inspire the perfume, but the story, the true story did. The picture, you can Google it, and it's a beautiful picture by it. I think it's a, someone called Klimt, Klimt, if I'm saying that correct. I'm not an art student, so I do apologise. So the next one might be, uh, some of you might disagree about this being elegant. Uh, I think it is. It's Coco Mademoiselle. It's the intense version. And I specifically, I'm only talking about this only because... The Eau de Parfum is so strong, it's very difficult for it to be kept under wraps and kept understated because it's such a beast. So whilst I think it does smell elegant, it's just such a loud perfume that that kind of 
takes away from the elegance of it. Whereas the Eau de Parfum Intense is a much gentler sillage and projection. So it lasts really well on me. I get a full day out of it, but it's not a massive beast. I can smell it on me and people will smell it if they get close enough, but it's not a big beast. So Coco Mademoiselle is a woody floral with a really lovely, uh, it's, it's got a really nice sort of, sort of resinous dry down. I think there's some labdanum. It's kind of like goes a little sticky and rich in the dry down. And it just smooths out the sharpness and screechiness that the original uh, Eau de Parfum can have. Or, or I get a little bit of sharpness from the Eau de Parfum, but the intense is just all rounded out. I'm not going to speak too much on this because I've spoken about it a lot. And also, I think most people know how this one smells. It's not difficult to go to a shop and smell it. I almost get a little uh, strawberry fruitiness from the opening. I just just smelt it then and it reminded me a little bit of Dior's, Miss Dior Cherie, a little bit. It's got like a slightly syrupy strawberryness just in the opening, but I love it. I really love it. So I do think it's elegant. Again, you wouldn't want to overspray it, but you can go a little harder on it because it's not a big projector. So between four and six sprays, I would say keep it classy. Any more if you wanna make more of an impact, which I certainly do. I will overspray that if I'm going out, if I want to make an impact. So this one, I think this is like my perfect, like ultra, it's professional but soft and approachable fragrance. It's Levant from Ormond Jane. You can see that I really have, in the last couple of years, almost emptied Levant. It's beautiful, it's comforting, but it's it's clean, but it's cosy at the same time. And this one is, I, I don't have the notes and I can never bloody remember them. And it's not brilliant. It's not that easy for me to break it down. I think there's Freesia, there are a few different florals, but I couldn't tell you. I think it's like, it's a little rosy, it's a little white floral, but it's very pretty, colorful kind of floral bouquet. But ultimately this is a musk perfume with a hint of vanilla and it's clean. It's almost laundry musk-ish to, I think some people might find it a little bit laundry musk-ish, but for me, it's just such a, such a big, musk note such a strong muskiness to it it just feels clean it feels soft and fluffy and approachable and it's really really beautiful it's a perfect work scent but if you want to still be approachable so this is not your big boss bitch you know shoulder pad type fragrance this is more your uh, you, you know if you wanted to make a deal with someone if you wanted to have a, a sensitive meeting if you wanted to be kind and em empathic empathetic empath <laughs> if you wanted to have some empathy <laughs> in a particular situation uh, i think that levant is perfect and it's very gentle but it's got decent projection and longevity despite being quite a soft and gentle fragrance you will smell it and you don't have to overspray at all four sprays i would say on this one and I would get the whole day out of it as well. So absolutely love Levant from Ormond Jane. And then we have Bukhara from Galavant. This is another musky one. And I do think musks are great clean musks. I just have to say clean musks are great when it comes to elegance and sophistication. There is a certain fluffiness and softness that they lend to a fragrance. And Bukhara is... It's jasmine, spices, musks, and iris, I would say predominantly, uh, but it's all blended together in this big fluffy cloud. You walk around with this aura and it is absolutely beautiful. I think it's not too sweet. There's a gentle sweetness here. No added sort of sweet notes at all. It's just fluffy. It's so fluffy. It's so fluffy. And interesting and unique so this is a lot more unique than the last few that i've showed you less sweet i would say uh, the jasmine isn't really sticking out it really blends like it's there you, you know it's there but it doesn't 
it's not jutting out it doesn't make it heady or beachy or screechy or anything like that I think because it smells like silk this one and if you've ever smelled um if you ever owned a silk any item of silk clothing sometimes a silk smells funny like it's got a really particular smell and I remember having a silk coat I was told this story before so I'm sorry if you've heard it before I remember buying a silk coat from it was a catalogue it was an ex catalogue shop an outlet place that I, I found this silk coat and I was a bit obsessed with silk back in the day and I bought this big silk coat and I had to take it back because it smelt of silk and so not all silk I, I guess I don't know what happens does it get treated to remove the scent and this coat hadn't had it happen I don't really know but I ended up taking it back because it had this really strong smell and not that it's an unpleasant smell but it was slightly weird um and I get that from Bukhara and of course uh, Bukhara is part of the Silk Road and that's the whole influence behind the fragrance is the spices and the silk and all the different trades and the, all the wonderful amazing goods that were traded on the Silk Road and I, I remember the first time I smelt it, I smelt silk, I actually got this memory of this coat and Nick from Galavan did confirm that, that it is part of the fragrance, it's supposed to be a part of the fragrance, this silk note and you know silk is a luxury item and I just think this, you know, when we come to talk about elegance and sophistication we do talk about luxury as well and Bukhara feels like a luxury item like you have this silk shawl wrapped around you and it's yeah it's wonderful and then my last one is Blanche Bette so this is classed as a gourmand I think by most people and I don't disagree but this is not full-on gourmand because I I don't think a full-on gourmand I don't think walking around smelling like a dessert a packet of sweets a cup of coffee a chocolate bar is really that elegant it's fun and it has its place and I definitely love the odd treat walking around smelling like a snack sometimes is fun you know and it could be fun for just a trip to the pub or uh, just you know in your own space whatever going to Asda's but when it comes to wanting to present oneself as elegant and sophisticated I don't think a literal gourmand is quite where I would go anyway but to me Blanche Bear is not a literal gourmand it has some gourmand elements I smell warm milk infused with almond I definitely smell that and you can't deny that that is a gourmand it's something that you can eat but it also has some floral elements and lots and lots of smooth clean musk and I find it creamy virgin on soapy so if you imagine all of that I've just described but kind of like take a, a bar of dove soap melt it down and mix it in that's what I get this is the smoothest thing ever it is so smooth and I think that's why it works when it comes to being elegant and sophisticated because it doesn't have this really big loud almond um, almond milk gourmand things jutting out it's not really really super sweet in fact it's not as sweet as you might expect and I think some people say it smells coconutty and I do understand that as well I'm not sure if that's I don't think that's an official note but I think a lot of people do say it smells coconutty and I I, I can see that like imagine a coconut cream mixing in with it all as well but not sugary sugary sweet it's quite sweet it's fairly sweet but it's no sweeter than let's say Levant or the Coco Mademoiselle it's a similar level of sweetness this one lasts so well I wore it on a 12-hour shift and it literally lasted the entire time including the drive to and from work so that's add another hour onto that at least really really good long-lasting perfume I don't think it develops a great deal it does get more musky as you wear it but it doesn't bore me because I think it's got that cleanliness to it so if it was really sweet and like full-on gourmand 
I probably would get sick of it after a couple of hours, but this just does not bore me. It is beautiful. I think it's very elegantly done. It's a perfume. It is a perfume, but it smells a little bit gourmand. So it's a, I, I coined a word, flormond, but I actually don't find this so floral that I would call it a flormond. It's more, it's much more about the musk. The musk and then the gourmand. So I don't know how to make a word out of that. Gore musk. Gore musk doesn't sound that great, does it? Muskmond. A muskmond? I, I think we can do better. Uh, in the comments, please coin a word that amalgamates gourmand and musk or musky or something like that. Let's do let's do it. I know one of you will come up with something fab. So that's Blanche Bear, it's by Liquid Imaginaires and I think it's a very, very classy, sort of gourmand, but clean and musky fragrance. So they are it, they are all of my uh, sophisticated, elegant, put together fragrances that I would choose for times when I want to feel that way. Let me know what your favourites are in the comments. If you like this video, do give me a thumbs up. And if you want to support me on Ko-fi, that would be fabulous. The link will be in the description. Thank you for watching and goodbye.